Hello everybody, this is Diane. I am ready to do a flip through of these glue books, or at least this one. This one is in my shop. Um, well, it will be by the time the video goes up. And I'll just show you uh, the cover of this one. I won't need to flip through it because it has the same kind of papers as in there and there's no embellishment on the papers. But before we get into those, I always have questions when I do a glue book video of what's a glue book. So I'll just quickly show you. This is my glue book that I made and it's really huge. I won't make them that big again because it took me forever to do it and it still has space in it. But it just is full of a variety of types of pages just like a junk journal and I just added in images that I like. It's just fun. I'm not like doing a specific collage image unless I feel like doing that. Otherwise I just glue stuff in. And and um, I, this one I did journaling in. I don't normally, this was my first one. I don't normally do journaling too much in them now. But I would glue something down and then glue something on another page. And then the next time I had a session, I would add something to the pages. Um, and then when I thought they were done, they were done. So that's this one. And you can see it's pretty full and it's really fun to look at. Look how full that is. And this is stretched to its limit. And the one I'm currently working in is this one. And um, I've been doing some collage videos in this. I don't, I didn't date, oh yeah, I started it in November of 2019. So I've been in it for over a year. And I still have quite a bit to do in it, but I've got a lot done. These things are stuck in there because they're one, things I want to add. So I have a recent video, actually, of working in this journal. Uh, this one only has three signatures, so it has a lot fewer pages. So I'll be finishing it quicker than I did the other one. And you can see at the end, there's a lot of empty. But I I flip through. I Even while I'm working on the first signature, I have other stuff spread throughout. I just kind of flip through till I find a page. See here I have um, these background pieces just glued on and I haven't done anything to them. I just wanted to glue them down so I'll have to go back and finish them up. So there's really no purpose to a glue book except that it's fun and satisfying and relaxing and you can feel creative um, even if you don't really feel like getting into a big project. So I just have a lot of images from magazines and books and, and things like that um, set aside for when I feel like working in my glue book. And then I have this one which I do use for a collage. So I don't I haven't done a lot as much in this one because I wait until I feel inspired to actually do a collage, a complete page. But this one is really fun also. So that's what you can do with a glue book. There are uh, lots and lots and lots of videos on glue books, and I would go into more detail, but I want to get into these. Um, so I'll show you this one first. This one's not in my shop, but I just wanted to talk about the collage a little bit. This is made with a K and Company smash book cover, and it had the craft cover with the embossing. So I rubbed some embossing ink over that, and I added some vintage postage stamps. This is a smash book that had the orange binding so I chose stamps with orange. These are rubber stamps that I used and cut out. Embossed cardstock. This is uh, an image from a book. A vintage plastic belt buckle or some sort of a buckle and I just threaded a ribbon through it. I don't know if this is Bakelite. I don't know how to tell but it is a vintage plastic. There's a little tiny cardboard game piece there. Um, this little file tab card was just cut from a scrap of scrapbook paper and that's um, a digital label from Roxy Creations. I added um, upholstery fabric and I used black thread for both of them this time. I don't use, I usually use white but I thought the black went well with these and I used some vintage orange rickrack. There was a stamp, a uh, smash and Oh my goodness. Smash book. Kane Company Smash Book logo right here. So I covered it up with this uh, card and it is a tuck spot. She can tuck a tag in there and um, a little collage on it. I left this 
The Kay & Company Smashbooks always came with a uh, marker slash glue pen, glue, glue stick. So one end of it was a marker and one end was a glue stick, but it was narrower than the glue sticks that you, that you buy. So I left that on there, um, but it was going to pull on the paper that I used for the uh, end, end paper. So I put some fabric there to help. So she can put a pen in there and pull on that a little bit without tearing the paper. Um, I just added that for the label inside. She can put her name and dates and stuff like that. And then I put an envelope on the back. She can tuck things in that she wants to glue into the book. And there is my signature hidden by the envelope flap. And the pages are pretty much the same kind of pages that are in here. So this is made with a vintage typing, uh, typing uh, textbook. And it's from 1920. And as I said in the sneak peek uh, video, I said that that's probably the oldest typing book that I've had. And I did a collage again on the front. Um, I wanted to glue this pin on the front, but it's got the pin back on, on it, so it wouldn't lay flat, of course, and I couldn't glue it. So I um, stuck it through a piece of fabric and then glued the fabric down. And I don't remember if I talked about all the other stuff. This is just an image from a book, this lovely lady. And um, all of these pieces are cardstock stickers that my friend sent me. And that's just from a vintage book. Now, the typing books are bound at the top, so you can flip them. And so this was a raw edge here on front and back. I'm sorry, I'm bumping my camera. I'll move a little bit. So I just used a piece of this vintage fabric to cover up that raw edge. And I did talk about in the sneak peek video about the fabric on the spine because the pieces that I wanted to use weren't long enough to wrap all the way around. So I kind of did a patchy effect. I made it so that it um, the ends were here and it didn't quite cover here. So I added another piece of that. And I really like the way that looks all patchy. <clears throat> and on the inside, it's more of this fabric and just a little bit of the green floral up there. This is vintage and this is vintage, but this one is not. There's a label there. I think somebody sent that to me in a Happy Mail. And I didn't add end papers because I wanted to leave these uh, stamps, the purple ink stamp, because I believe it was probably stamped in the 1920s. All right, so going through the book, the pages, just just quickly, because I did, there's no embellishment on them, because you are going to glue on them. I had to create slightly larger pages because the book was wide. So I sewed my um, cutoff pieces together. And this was a cutoff from another sewn together page. So I just added that in there so you get lots of patchy look on this one. So uh, the beginning of each signature has one of these pages. There's map, scrapbook paper. I don't use my pretty things because you're going to collage all over it. And I don't want you to feel like you can't glue on that because it's too pretty. I don't think that's too pretty to glue on. There's uh, a vintage school book, calendar pages. I don't know what, that's kind of, some kind of a book. Uh, wallpaper. Now that is pretty, but this is sturdy enough that you could do mixed media or something on there, do some painting and collaging. This is from this typewriter book. There's a State Farm <laughs> envelope with a window so you can glue something back here that would peek through the window. I made it hard for you though because these two pages are layered right there. This is from a magazine, uh, scrapbook paper, another calendar page. And then the next signature has, it does have the scrappy paper but at the beginning I put this cut, it was cut from a very big children's book that was done in a comic book style. Another window envelope, scrapbook paper behind it, map, calendar, wallpaper, very textured, so really great to um, paint on. Scrapbook paper, children's book, 
And then the last signature has another sewn together paper. This is from a Vogue coloring book. Nice paper. Scrapbook paper, the typewriter book, calendar, children's book, scrapbook paper, and wallpaper. This is actually a border, but it's very wide. And a calendar. So those are the kinds of pages that I used and all kinds of room here for you to glue. And I made this signature two and a half inches, which is really much wider than it needs to be right now. But as you could see, this one is filling up. This one used to look like that. And this one is ridiculous. I don't think that the other ones will get this full because they don't have as many pages. And this one, I think, is... How big did I make this spine? Three and a half inches? Yeah, this is a three and a half inch spine. So, I filled it right up. So that's why um, they look pretty empty, because they are empty, and you are going to fill it up. So this one is in my shop, the Typist Glue Book. And I hope that you, whoever purchases it, will have so much fun gluing things on the pages. And if you don't have a glue book and you don't want to purchase one, you can easily make one yourself. Or just take a composition book and remove some of the pages. Um, take a, a sturdy magazine. Take any kind of a book that you can just um, convert into a glue book and remove some of the pages because it'll tear the spine, it'll break the spine if you fill it up with glued images and not remove pages because it'll be too full. So you don't have to make or purchase a glue book. You can just take something you have and use it for a glue book. At least to practice on and see if you like it and then maybe you'll want to make one. So thank you for watching and I hope that you have a very creative day today. I know this is a short video and I'm sorry about that, but that's all I have for you right now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.